All right, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. So today we are talking about the best curriculum for autistic children, for autism, and for neurodiverse children. In every video when I review curriculum, I do a product of the day. And today it is zones of regulation. If you don't know what zones of regulation are, they'll help you if you have a child who sometimes gets really easily frustrated, like if you have ODD, or sometimes you know it gets aggressive or angry or sad or upset. It's basically helping them identify what zone they are in. So, red zone, they are mad and angry, essentially. Yellow zone, they are frustrated, they're getting tired or they're worried. Green zone, they're happy, they're calm, they're feeling okay. Blue zone is sad, sick, and tired. So you start off by saying, and you can print this off the internet, you can find one. And you start off by saying, okay, which, you are, gosh, you're blue, you are blue. So if they're not good at identifying feelings, you are blue right now. You're mad and you're angry, you're blue. Oh, geez, you know, you're green. So you start identifying you notice what zone they're in and you identify it. Then after a while, I don't know how long it could take, could take days, could take weeks. Then once they understand the zones, it's like, okay, how do we get you back to green? Because you two are on the same team. How do we get you back to green? Do we do some trampolining? Do we do some reading together? What can I do to help you? Or a better question, what do you need right now? Do you need a hug? Do you need to go for a walk? Do you need to talk? Do you need, okay, so zones of regulation. Another product, second product of the day is dulse flakes. Certain children with certain brain types need way more minerals than other children. I have accidentally done a study. All right, so let me paint you a picture. The last few weeks of summer, before my stepson went back, because we're overseas right now, my son and him, I let them eat almost whatever they wanted. So they ate way more ice cream, way more cookies, way more, more dairy and more sugar than I let him have normally. And within a couple, honestly, within about two weeks, three weeks, wetting the bed started that never happened before. So things that had never, he was almost breaking down. The anxiety was way higher before. So. That just taught me a very important accidental lesson. That's to keep, I keep the dairy to a minimum. We have like cheese pizza once a week and I keep the processed sugars to a minimum. There's no cakes, there's no ice cream. You get cake on your birthday, things like that. If we go out, you can have a muffin sometimes. So things like that. So things are like once a week when we go to the bakery, you could get a donut. So we do the, we keep it very minimal. And one of the things that I do is I put dulse flakes. They're just little flakes and it's salty. And a lot of people worry about a lot of people worry about the mercury in them as far as seafood goes. I'm not too concerned about it and I honestly believe that this has less in it than other parts of the ocean from what I've read. That's just my opinion. But what it does is, so I sprinkle some in the oatmeal. I put some in his oatmeal. I put it in the smoothies. So we still have a lot of, we have a ton of fruit and we have a ton of fruit sugars, but we don't have, but we just don't have the processed sugar as much. Let's talk about curriculum and what curriculum I use. For my children now let me start by saying one child has ODD ADHD and I'm not sure if that's actually considered neurodiverse or not I've never looked it up and the other child is Asperger's and apraxia apraxia of speech so and I actually have a third boy who doesn't have anything hmm. how does that happen I don't know so now for if they can't sit still a lot the math with confidence works great oh I don't have it here with me if they can sit still this starts in grade one and it is the Math Mammoth Workbook. So let me go, let me show you into it. So we do, I can. I would also consider going year round and you do one page a day, but you don't have to do all of this, okay? Because what I would do is I would check off a box here. I find that kids that are neurodiverse do better with a mastery program. That's just what I've noticed than a spiral program. Spiral is what you learn in school, the good and the beautiful spiral. Um, this is mastery. And same with math with confidence is mastery. So you learn one thing, you focus on one thing at a time. So this whole section, we're just doing addition, right? These are higher additions, you start off with lower additions. And then, so what you do to make it spiral is you just do, okay, I put a dot next to here and a dot next to here. That means these two rows need to be done today and say one of these, and we'll say, you know, like one of these rows, okay? So that's what they have to do today. And then you can go back at another time and do it, or you can, you know, the next day you can go and do the other. It just depends whatever you like. But just to make it more spiral, you leave some blank, and that way you can go in at the end of the chapter and go back and do some more. So we just do a page of math a day is what we're working on. It's actually very light. I know it's, it's, so let me show you. I know it's got writing in it, but. 
So this is how you start. So this is what you start with. So make two groups, one and three. So you circle it, four, two and two. So you follow it. So it starts off very slow. So I, there's really no prep with this and I quite like it. Now, in my son in the beginning when we did it, first when we started, I would write the answers in. Then he would start doing it when he was at a later phase, he would start doing dots. This is for kids who can't write. I would just have him do dots as the answer. And it's easier if you use a pen or a marker to do how many dots for the answer. Okay, so that's, now next up, so for language arts, you can separate them or you could do it all together. So language arts, you can do, like it comes all together, the spelling, not necessarily the vocab, but the spelling, the handwriting, and the reading is all done together normally. If your child is, and that's fine if your child can do that. My one child, the ODD ADHD child, can do that sort of formula together. So that's the good and the beautiful. Um, and that's generally any language arts program, if they say language arts. However, my other son, because of the handwriting and because they progress at different levels with reading, there's a couple things we do. Okay, so sight words. So sight words, when they were originally taught or learned, the way memory works is they need to be paired with a picture in order to really be learned. Now, I've explained this in other videos, so I don't want to bore you, but there's two ways to teach reading, and one is the phonics way, and one is the world language way, I believe it's called, which you can't really find a curriculum in the world language way if you're looking at it. But essentially what it is, is so you take the Dolch list, that was the, those are the 200 most popular words at that time in 1936 in children's books. These are the Dolch pre-primary sight cards by Frazzles. The only thing is I wish I could take them apart. You can't take them apart. But besides that, so A, and, away, big, blue. And then when they start to master, because the way the memory works is it pairs the word and the picture together, you can take it away and do it that way. So that is great for kids who are really good in memorization. We also used All About Reading as well for that. And I don't have, I don't think you need the All About Reading pre-reading. You can just print off something from the internet to make sure they know the sounds and letter identification. So my child that can't sit still, a lot of times what we do is, okay, uh, wait, point it out, point out the A's, let's see. And if your child, if he's not really receptive to doing schoolwork or not receptive to to doing what you want, you just have to wait until he asks for something. Children will ask, no matter their age, they will ask for a glass of water, they will ask for something they need you to get them, a car ride if they're older, uh, to play their tablet, can you, you know, they will ask you for something. And then you say, absolutely. But first, I need some letter identification done. You guys show me all the E's on this page, sir. Okay, so you're kind, you're nice, you're friendly. Obviously, you're not gonna let your kid th thirst to death. Like, that's not a thing. If he's asking for water, you can ask, say, you know, or do, if you're trying to get your child to look in the eyes of someone, like, that's what we practiced for a while. I told him he could look right here. I say, so I would say, he would say, hey, can I have a drink of water, for example? And I would say, yeah, absolutely. And he'd do, look at me right here. Look at my forehead, look at my forehead, look at me right there. Oh! Lots of positive reinforcement here. And then we go get the water. Okay, and what you can also do when they get a bit older is you can have them be direct with people and say, I'm not going to look you in the eyes or I'm not able to look you in the eyes or it's easier for me not to look you in, to concentrate on what you're saying if I'm not looking you in the eyes because I'm reading too much of your body. Okay, so honesty and directness, there's nothing wrong with that. And people may be taken aback by a direct, directness. I'm a very direct person and people are really taken aback anyway. So. That's just, I just, I can't change my personality. And that's just, some people are, are not used to that. So for handwriting, we got printing letters and numbers. This is a really easy way. I really like this. It's really easy. And there is a teacher's manual, but I didn't get it. And I really don't think you need it. So talk, if you're left-handed, tilt the paper here, you're right-handed. And now let's just go in. So for the name, it says teacher demonstrates child copy below. So you can write their name and they can write their name. And then here they're adding glass. And then when you get into it's F down, F across, F across. So again, I really like the page a day system, especially if you go year round. It's just kind of, 
it's not that hard. I understand you're like, oh, we're working on weekends or da da da, whatever. Or not skip weekends if you want. That's fine. Um, oh no, got one on it. Of course, the one spy didn't wipe on the counter. Okay, so let's talk about history. History is a very interesting topic as far as I'm concerned. History, when you teach the timeline, which is if you just go through human history throughout the world, or you even start at the beginning if you're into the Big Bang and you want to talk about that, whatever it is, if you if you get the Kingfisher history book or just the Smithsonian Timelines book, if you but if you're secular, you can get the Smithsonian Timelines book. If you're not, you probably want to stick with the Kingfisher, the red version, the Kingfisher um, history uh, encyclopedia. Okay, so let's look right here though. This is what I like. I like. I did clean for you people. I swear. I like the Curiosity Chronicles because it's short. Look, so start hunting and gathering. Mesopotamia starts farming. Egypt gets united. So this is not in any particular religion. It discusses all of them as they come about. So this is what I like. But what's interesting is that when you teach the timeline, if you're just using like the history, but here, I'll talk while I show it to you. So if you're just using um, the history book, you can just look up. So for example, Mesopotamia starts farming. So you can Google cool books on Mesopotamia or cool books on the beginning of farming. And then, you know, search them at the library and go get them at the library. Okay, or head into Egypt and talk about Egypt. Now this book I really like, the reason I like it, besides the fact that it's really nice, is that, so if your child's older, then they can read the Ted part and you read the Mona part. So it's Mona and Ted, they just give you snapshots because that's all they say kids remember. So you can talk about manas and you can get books of manas. Now let's talk about art. So one of the things I use for art is a child's introduction to art. For my child that can't sit still, what we do is when it's breakfast time, that's when I pull out a painting and I'm like, okay, you can pull out any painting. It doesn't really matter, you can go through the book. And it's got right at the bottom, next to the painting, it always has a little bit of helpful and interesting information about this painting and then you can discuss it. So we're really discussing art there. And then if your child has a modality that they're interested in, a type of art, like maybe they like working with clay, maybe they like whatever it is, just discover that and go with that. That's, I keep it simple. Now my um, Asperger child, he's not that into art, but he is into drawing bases and hotels and things like that. So we do, we do do that. So it's just got famous paintings. And then if you're done with that, the next level up is art children's encyclopedia. All right, so this is very cool because it does, it goes, it's got different styles. So it's got scenes of everyday art. It's got the Baroque and Rocco period. I know I'm not really great at pronunciation because I read the books and I don't watch the videos on it as much. So my pronunciation is always, eh. like I was reading this book, that, these really good books and I'm reading them to my kids and I'm like, he's a poor kind wonder. And my mom's like, I think he's poor sign. And I was like, really? So then I was like, poor kind, poor sign wonder. I don't know which it is. I was gonna, I could Google it, but I didn't feel like it. So it's got just different time periods, the Christian time period of painting, Gothic art, and it gives you a little rundown once you go through that. So that I really like. As far as music goes, I, I love David Garrett and I loved, I, my kids love instrumental and classical music. And that's because I introduced upbeat, fast music and David Garrett does that. David Garrett's the fifth, I forget, but all of his, he does like rock symphonies on his violin and they're very fast and I really like them. And another thing we do for music is we have composition time. It is not structured. You, you just gotta play. It's on your list, your checklist of what to do today is play some music, sit down and compose some songs. I wanna hear some songs. So compose some songs for me. And that actually created a love of music, a real passion of, um, one of my children. Now you could also choose a gentle curriculum. Blossom and Root is a Blossom and Root is a very gentle curriculum, and it's not expensive. So it's um, it is secular, so they don't talk about God in there. So if that bothers you, well, nature is God, as as uh, this nun once told my mom. And then next that I want to discuss with you is oh, pursue their passions. You know, it is a misnomer that your kids need to be exposed to everything and they need to be well rounded. Go with their passion. Go with their passion. It, study after study shows success when a child is pursuing their passion and the parents support that passion. So don't worry about, oh, he should be interested in this. We should try this. We should try that. We should do that. 
go with their passion, especially if your child is neurodiverse. If they have a passion, go with it. That's what I say. And now, so if your child cannot write, so if they can't write, then you're gonna separate the language arts programs, okay? And you can do like all about reading. All about reading is great. Um, a lot of people love it. So there's all about reading. You can also do another great one, but seeing teacher intensive was a uh, pride reading, but that seemed pretty teacher intensive to me. The next thing that you can do is, you, of course, do dots for math. I talked about that. And do tracing games, of course, and even with your finger, and mazes. Um, oh, kids love mazes. Find a time to read to your kid. If your kid, like my ADHD, ODD child, we read first thing in the morning or when he's eating. That is when we do, that is when I sit and read to them, the picture books and things like that. And you can learn a lot from picture books. A great picture book list, if you will, is the Torchlight. I like Torchlight for their book list and their book list is free. You can go to their website and it'll tell you what books that you're gonna need and you can't always find them. That's the problem with Torchlight, but the ones you can find are pretty awesome. You can also watch a bunch of my videos because I, I love books. We go through books all the time. I always review them. I always think they're interesting and fun and fascinating. All right, there you go. I hope that helped you. I at least give you some ideas for the best curriculum for autism and neurodiverse children. Bye-bye. Please like to subscribe. Yes. And, and hit the bell for notifications.